Hi, Bo Bakers. We are back with another recipe in the series, 100% from scratch. We already made a lasagna 100% from scratch. This week, we are making tiramisu. I'm talking mascarpone, ladyfingers, everything. Here's how to do it. So the first thing we want to do is make our mascarpone cheese because this is going to take the longest. So here in a heavy bottom saucepan, I'm gonna put it onto a medium heat and I'm going to add in my heavy whipping cream. So all I want to do is let this come to a simmer and then we can move on to our next step. Once it's simmering like this, we are gonna stir in our lemon juice. And almost automatically, do you see that? It'll start to thicken. Now what we're going to do is just let this continue to simmer, give it a little bit of a stir. That lemon juice is going to help to set your cream. And we're gonna let this sit here and reduce for around, I usually time it around 13 to 15 minutes. So reduce quite a bit. You'll see the color change and it will get really lovely and thick. So we're gonna keep a close eye on it until it's ready. So a common question is, what's the difference between mascarpone and cream cheese? And there's a big difference. My recipe for cream cheese is just milk and lemon juice and it's curdled and separated and then whipped. Mascarpone is cream and a little bit of lemon juice and it's not curdled, it's thickened with the cream. So there's a big difference there. So a lot of people ask, can I use cream cheese instead of mascarpone in a tiramisu? And I would say, don't do it. Mascarpone is so creamy and delicious and velvety. It's not the same as cream cheese in this recipe. So this has been 13 minutes. Now look at the color of that. It's gotten a yellowy kind of rich creamy color. It has reduced and thickened a lot as you can see and it coats the back of a spoon really well. I'm gonna remove this from the heat and head over to our countertop. So waiting for me, I have a bowl with ice water. I'm going to pop my pot into there and this will cool down our mascarpone really fast and it will also help it thicken. Let it sit here for a few minutes, giving it a stir every so often. Okay, look at that, beautiful and thick. So here's what we're gonna do. I have a bowl, a sieve, and some cheesecloth. I'm going to pour our mascarpone into that. See how thick that already is. I'm going to cover that over, and I'm gonna pop this into the fridge overnight. Let it hang a little bit, strain, thicken, and then it'll be ready for our recipe. Lucky for us, I prepared one yesterday. I hung it overnight. And this is what your mascarpone should look like. Check that out. Wow, of course, there's something so satisfying about making your own homemade ingredients. Look how beautiful that mascarpone is. Really thick, creamy. This is going to be fantastic in our tiramisu from scratch. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is put this back into the fridge. And the next step we're going to do is make our ladyfingers from scratch really, really lovely. So for those of you who haven't made ladyfingers before, this is a fantastic recipe. They are really easy to make at home and really satisfying too. So here I have a stand mixer. You can also use an electric hand mixer. I'm going to add into this my egg yolks. And then next we are going to add in just roughly around half of your sugar there, quarter cup. Now we're gonna turn it on to a high speed. And let this whip up until it's really lovely and thick. So you're talking around three minutes or so on high. I don't speak Italian, so forgive me, but ladyfinger in Italian is Ciavardi, so often you will see that written in a recipe for tiramisu over ladyfingers. Or you can call them lady hands, as my three-year-old does. Either of those will work perfectly fine. So this is looking lovely and thick, look at that. So I'm going to put this into a nice clean bowl over here. I'm going to rinse out this bowl and the whisk, and then we're gonna whip up our egg whites into our mixer, here they go, room temperature again, like I said. Now we are going to whip these up on high speed until they're soft peaks. So this just takes a few minutes. So after around two minutes or so, your egg whites will have thickened and you start to see them ripple. At this point, we slowly dust in our sugar, a little bit at a time, and you'll start to see our egg whites get thicker and thicker. Once all the sugar is in there, I like to give it a few more seconds. And then you'll see this is lovely and thick. And it gets kind of glossy and shiny too. So here's what we're gonna do. You might have noticed I have a metal spoon. Now I was trained many years ago in pastry to do things the classical French way. And this is what you do when you're incorporating uh, egg whites or two mixes together when you're trying to keep in the air. You use a thin edge metal spoon because it's nice and thin. And when you go to fold in one into the other, you're not knocking out the air with a thick spatula. You have a nice thin edge just to slice right through it and do it gently. 
Like what's the point in incorporating and doing all that work if we're going to knock it out with a big thick spatula. So look at that. Beautiful, lovely and thick into your egg yolk mixture. The egg whites are almost completely folded in. So here's what we're going to do at this point. I'm going to stop. Here I have my flour, all purpose flour. And we are going to sieve this into our mixture. Now you do not often see me sieving things. I sieve powdered sugar. I save cocoa powder and when making certain, again, classical French recipes like a Genoise sponge, lady fingers, something like that, where you're trying to incorporate air and make it as light as possible, we save our flour. It's very important. I know I'm sounding like a teacher here now. This is what you have to do, save your flour, but just do it. It, it, it does make the big difference. Let's go back in with our metal spoon and just fold those ingredients together until the flour is combined. Resist the urge to keep on folding in. You want to do it until just combined. Before you started making your lady fingers, you would have prepared two trays, just like this, with parchment paper. Now here's what I do as a really simple guide. I drew with some pencil, three and a half inch lines on the trays. So it will just guide us to help us to do very straight lady fingers. You wanna make sure that when you do that, turn over the parchment so you're not doing it with the pencil side up near your food. Have a piping bag fitted with a round nozzle, a medium nozzle. Now all you want to do is just follow the lines, put some pressure on the piping bag and do your lady fingers. I know it's hard, but try and do even pressure and keep the lady fingers the same thickness. Takes a little bit of practice, just so you know your first one is always a little bit of the, the janky one. Okay, I'm noticing they're looking a little bit like caterpillars, but when they bake, they're going to be lovely and smooth and beautiful. Let's get them into the oven now. We don't want to hang around with these guys. Bake your lady fingers on convection, which is fan assist at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, 108 degrees Celsius for around 14 to 15 minutes. We like to get them nice and light golden brown. So there you go. These bake really fast because you have a nice high temperature. So these look good, nice and light golden brown. I have to say, I'm pretty proud of my piping skills. They're pretty straight. <laughs> so I'm just going to set these over to the side and we'll move on to our next step, which is our mascarpone mousse. So for our mascarpone mousse, it's actually a similar technique to the lady fingers, which is kind of funny. Here, in my stand mixer, you can also do it using an electric hand mixer. We're going to add in our room temperature egg yolks. And then into this, we're going to add in all of the sugar, crank our machine up to high, and let this whip up until it gets really nice and thick. So around five minutes or so, even thicker than the lady fingers. So this is perfect. Now let's add in our mascarpone. Give it another quick mix. You'll see it get lovely and thick. Then we'll take that out of the bowl and set it over to the side in a different bowl. I'm gonna rinse the bowl and the whisk and then whip our egg whites. Now whip your egg whites on high speed until you get stiff peaks. Now we're going to add in our whites into our mascarpone mix. And with a metal spoon, again, gently fold one into the other. You want to be careful not to over mix this, just combine in those egg whites. You'll notice that your mascarpone mix gets lovely and light and fluffy. Okay, gorgeous. That was the last thing we had to make before we assemble. So let's get everything that we've made and bring it all together. So assembly time. Here I have a nice nine by 13 inch. This is a piece of Irish pottery, Nicholas Moss, which I absolutely love. I have my plates of lady fingers. I have a mixture here of coffee and I added in brandy. If you don't drink alcohol, feel free to leave it out, but you want nice, strong coffee in there. And here is our mascarpone mix. So this could not be simpler. Here's what we're gonna do. Take your homemade lady fingers, give them a dunk, a few seconds in there, and then into your dish. Dunk, one, two, three. Let them soak, but not too much. We don't want to get them all soft and mushy. And just keep on dipping and layering into the bottom of your dish. Once you have layer of lady fingers on the bottom, we are going to take roughly a third of our mascarpone mix and spread it on top of the fingers. Now we want to repeat exactly what we did two more times. 
So this recipe is actually part of our series 100% from scratch. Now, a few weeks ago, we made a lasagna 100% from scratch. It was absolutely delicious and it got such a great response. We thought like, what else can we make 100% from scratch? So we're going to make this and then soon, in a few weeks, we're going to make a cheesecake 100% from scratch. So keep an eye out for that. And we're done. So here's what you want to do with the tiramisu. You put it into the fridge and let it set and firm up and soak and all those flavors marry together and the texture get really lovely. So I'm gonna cover this, put it into the fridge for a minimum of four hours and then it's ready to serve. Just a note, I wouldn't leave it longer than 24 hours, otherwise it gets a bit soggy. Just before you serve your tiramisu, dust it generously with some cocoa powder on top. Now you have a lovely show-stopping dessert, completely made from scratch to feed a crowd. Without a doubt, this is a family favorite dessert and everyone's gonna love it. This tiramisu is next level and you'll know that from the moment you bite into it. Ladies' fingers are so lovely and they're soft and spongy. And that homemade mascarpone mousse with homemade mascarpone, super creamy, rich, subtle flavor, and then the cocoa on top. It is everything you would want in a dessert. I'm having a lot of fun doing this series. Let me know in the comments below what other recipes you'd like to see me make 100% from scratch. I'll see you back here again really soon.